Hello everybody and welcome to Honor Thy Podcast. This is the weekly DC TV Arrowverse podcast where we discuss everything Arrowverse. My name is Declan McKinney, you may know me as DC TV Talk, and with me as always is my co-host Dan McCants, otherwise known as Mule Kick Media. Hey, I'm still exhausted from Comic-Con, even though I've barely seen any of the panels, but yeah. And even though you barely made any videos unlike your boy. What do you mean barely made videos unlike your boy? What Name a video you made. Yeah, but I've been very busy. I can I've, eleven. I've been busy during this period. Okay, I've been I've been reviewing actual video games and beating actual video games. So I've I'm been not doing. A gamer, so yeah, but I am because I am actually a hardcore gamer. Those days are gone for me. Oh anyway, my god! You heard it right. Comic Con was last weekend, and Comic Con is the best time of year for DC TV fans, except for when they're actually on. And we actually get to get all the news and first trailers for the shows. And this is like official news, so we don't have to rely on leaks anymore. Because quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of leaks this year. It seems yeah. like we're getting like so many. Yeah, you get so many leaks, then they all just turn out to be complete rubbish. Like the ones. Yeah, because literally all the leaks that we have covered on this show and that I've covered in my videos, they are literally all fake. <laughs> like all of them. Yeah. At least from what we can tell. So I'm kind of I'm probably just gonna stop making videos on leaks now because we got like a new we got like a new page of leaks like every week now, and I just can't be bothered with it anymore. Yeah, it's just it's just bullshit because I just can't trust them anymore. It's like everyone just about oh, oh arrow in arrow, you know Stephen Amell as Oliver Queen. He's gonna be locked in a j- jail for a year. It's like no, the trailer no, said it's months. five months. Like it would ne- It's like it would never be that. <laughs> I know it was never going to be anyway. It doesn't make sense in the overall <sighs> universe. Anyway, anyway. Um, but before we dive into the DC TV stuff, we just want to talk quickly about the trailer for the upcoming show on the DC Universe streaming service, which is called Titans. Uh, which is obviously the live-action Teen Titans show. Um, bit divisive. <laughs> oh, I don't like it. Uh, when like I first it. watched it, I screamed because I, I was so hyped about it because I was really excited about the show. Um, I really liked the trailer when I first seen it. Um, but as time's gone on, it has sort of diluted a bit more in my brain. Um, I still like the trailer overall. I still enjoy it. But yeah, it, it is very cringy at times. It's very on it's, the nose. It's, it's cringy all the way through, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to be like so edgy. It's um, so fucking edgy and crap. It's crap. Fuck Batman. Um, oh my god. I mean, yeah. I mean, that, obviously, that's that's the thing. It's the fact that Robin just said that. Uh, obviously, we do know before this trailer came out that basically Dick Grayson left Bruce Wayne. He absolutely hates him for some reason. We don't know what that reason is. Um, it's the excuse to not have Batman on the show. That's it. Basically, yeah, that's literally yeah. I actually said that when when that news. I was like, okay, Batman's not on the show. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously there was that. However, I will say I really like Brenton Thwaites as Dick, Dick Grayson. I really like him. Yeah, um, uh, this dude looks great. I don't. It's just that it's just bullshit that they're trying to fucking make him all dark and edgy, but it doesn't fit his character from the comics. Like this just feels more like them trying to make Jason Todd out of Dick Grayson. It just doesn't work. And the fact that, like... It's all... weird, because Jason Todd's in the show. I know. It's just even more, like, confusing. I just... I don't get it. And it's, like, all those fucking Titans fanboys who have to, like, rigorously defend, like, oh, he didn't shoot anyone in that trailer. Or, oh, he didn't step on that guy's neck. It's like, well, the fact you had to go in such detail to explain it shows how awful the trailer is. Because it makes it look as if he's killing them. and makes it look as if he's snapping that guy's neck by standing on it. Like, it's it's shit. It comes off as forced. All of these, like, dark elements, they feel forced. They don't feel natural. Like... A lot of it feels lazy as well, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, especially... This is sort of on a separate point, but... Obviously, I said the Robin costume is amazing. About half the costumes are amazing. The other half are not. No. And it seems like we kind of got bored halfway through because, like, you got the Robin costume, which is amazing. And, and Hawk and Dove, Dove yeah. costumes, which are pretty great. But then you get to Starfire, Ravens, and Beast Boys, and they're just like the most generic thing. And those leaks, again, going back to leaks, they completely lied because they said that those costumes for like Starfire were not her actual costume, but it looks like they are. Um. So yeah, it's just, it, it's just, it feels lazy a lot of it, and also they. One thing I picked up on, I told you about this already, but when Robin first lands on the car and he uses the, the yeah, grapple... Yeah, he uses the sound effect from the sound Arkham games. Yeah. The Arkham games, yeah. So it's just, again, they're just reusing it's assets. It's lazy, it's just lazy. Like, here's the thing. If you want to promote your show as dark, it's perf- perfectly fine. But if you're going to do it, do it in a manner that, I don't know, something like Daredevil does. Daredevil is a, is a serious show. It tries to ground itself. But on the trailer, it isn't so fucking heavy-handed about it. 
all it does is focus on the areas that it can market itself on, which is obviously its action, but it doesn't like oversell this edginess and darkness to it. Same with Arrow, I'd say. You like you look at the early trailers of Arrow, obviously they're quite grounded, but they don't feel like over the top in terms of the dark and edginess. This just got it all wrong. It marketed this tone in like the completely wrong way because it just comes across as just really stupid to me. Yeah, it's it's like the swearing and the the over over glamour like glorified. Uh, gl it's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Glorified violence. Yeah, is it's just too much. Yeah, and also it's... that also I love the fact that they had to digitally make Raven's hair purple, like or at least that's what yeah. it looks like. And then it's like, why have they made her character such a fucking crybaby? In the comics, she's such a badass. Why are they making into this like little child who's like, oh, do you believe in monsters? What the fuck do you mean believe in monsters? Your mum is a demon. You're in the DC universe. I know, it's it's bullshit. Honestly. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously we don't know to what extent of the DC universe this is. The only other sort of character we know of is Batman, but it, it's just it's really strange. Just seeing all like the it is so forced, like seeing the, the swearing, the, the the violence, it's just like because like you say with Daredevil and Arrow and stuff, it's dark and it's gritty and it's grounded, but you know, it doesn't push it. It's just that it just shows it and it doesn't like, you know, say oh look here's daredevil and his kingpin slamming a guy's head in a door it's not like that it's just it just shows that it is dark and it can it focuses on the story and it mm -hmm. focuses on yeah. the characters without having to show violence like i would be surprised if there's an entire scene of dick grayson just like beating the hell out of someone for no reason yeah and it's the same with arrow as well again it just goes on and but this it's like oh we have to show that there's like dick grayson basically shooting people whether he kills them or not he shoots people and then we have to see the fact that he's breaking someone's jaw and we have to see the fact that he swears you know it's just it feels really forced and just try so hard to be edgy when it's, it's it just makes it a bit more hilarious than that i mean i still like the trailer overall i still am excited about the show i'm still gonna watch it but yeah i mean as time's gone on i have started to really sort of dislike the trailer as time goes on um so yeah it, it's it's a bit of a mixed one for me mm. but um i'm still gonna watch it i'm still gonna give it a go Mm, yeah, I'll give it a go, but I'm not exactly like as confident as I was before, and definitely had my confidence like knocked down a bit because of that trailer. Yeah. Do you want to discuss the DC films quickly? Yeah, I guess we can do. I mean, all we got was like new trailers for them, but I'd say the both of them were pretty good. Um, I like them both. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, there was also, I mean, just quickly, there was Wonder Woman 1984 stuff shown exclusively to people at SDCC. Um, apparently, it was just like footage of. Wonder Woman in the in the shopping mall from the photos we'd seen uh, of her just like taking out some guys with the lasso. That's all good. I mean, they are still filming, so uh, I'm not surprised we didn't see that. But yeah. um, one thing that's weird is Patty Jenkins, who was the director of the film, she was saying that um, apparently this is not a sequel. This is like completely standalone. Hmm. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> so why bring back Steve Trevor? Well, that's what I'm worried about because if they're saying that this is this is not connected, is he just going to show up and they're not going to explain it? <laughs> Like, is it? Are they just gonna act like it never happened? And if so, that's really just stupid because that's one of the most that's one of the best moments in the film. Is in the first film is when Steve Trevor sacrifices himself. Like, that's a great mo yeah. That's a great moment. And if they're just gonna undercut that, say, oh, the man, it's just oh. I mean, it annoys me the fact that Steve Trevor's coming back at all, but the fact that they might not even explain this. I mean, maybe Patty Jenkins didn't really know what she was on about, but I don't know. I, I hope she didn't know what she was on about. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a bit confused with that. Um. But anyway, talk about the trailers we did get. Start off with Shazam. Uh, clearly very different in tone than what they were, sort of the DCEU is. Or the yeah. world's of DC, I should say. World's um, of DC? Yeah, so we just... So that's They came in and said, welcome to the world's of DC. So apparently they've renamed it. So it was never it was never the DCEU, apparently. Even though I'm pretty sure Warner Brothers execs have called it that in the past. Um, it's now the world's DC. Okay, whatever. Um, I guess it makes sense if they want to do like this Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie that yeah. they have the world of DC. I guess they can kind of stretch that. And also, it is different from like they haven't got the word universe in it, so I guess that's quite different. Um, I really like the Shazam trailer though. That was good. Mm, yeah, the Shazam trailer was pretty good. I, I like you said, I liked it because because it was a it's a change in tone for them. I think the comedy really worked as well, and I think the acting in it was actually quite good. I can't remember the kid's name that plays the Billy Bats and what's his name? Asher Angel. Yeah, I th I I thought it was it was pretty good because obviously you know yeah. with him you know to share the main role obviously with someone like you know Zachary Levi, like I just thought in the trailer it was very very good and I I I'm quite interested by it. I've heard rumors as well apparently that uh, Superman makes a cameo in the film, but I doubt that's going to happen. But I think it's just yeah. going to be a, a nice like light hearted 
take on Superman, and then everyone will turn around and say, "This is what Man of Steel should have been like." Like that's yeah, what they're I all mean, I was saying. saying that already out of Justice yeah. League. He, he's that because Justice League is the best Superman is in the universe. But yeah, I mean, I think Shazam just to Zachary Levi. He just he's really good at playing a big kid. Yeah, um, and just getting that vibe, like the scene you know where he walks in with the. You know, he says, "Oh, you're welcome for not getting robbed," and he's like, "Oh, hey, I'm a superhero and stuff." <laughs> and even him, like, I love the fact he just charges the phones. I think that's brilliant. I thought that was really funny. Um, yeah, I, I, I do like the tr- the tone. I, I really like the tone. It, it fits Shazam well. It, it doesn't quite blend in with the overall universe, but I mean, I guess sometimes you just have to change things if you want. I mean, look at Thor Ragnarok. Like yeah. that was like a completely different tone for the Thor films, but it worked in the end. So I'm sure this is going to work. Um, I just think it's got a really talented director. Also, the villain's really good as well. Dr. Savannah, who's been played by Mark Strong. I like that. Hopefully, this will be a much more successful Marvel property, or DC property for this guy. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I like the Shazam trailer a lot. And also, like, the training montage is quite funny. Yeah. Uh, then we've got Aquaman, which uh, was kind of like the anticipated one. We were all kind of waiting for this trailer because it's been so long since... <laughs> well, we haven't had a trailer. Um, it just looks beautiful, first off. Like... All the scenery of Atlantis, the underwater shots, looks stunning. Yeah, I I think in terms of like the films that James Wan's made, just based off the trailer, this just like looks the most like visually striking. It looks really good, and I mean, I think everyone kind of expects it to be quite grand and epic because obviously Aquaman's releasing this year. We've not had any like trailers or promos for it, so they had to kind of like go all out with this one. And I, I thought it was really good on the action front and the visual effects. I thought for the most part, looks really, really good. Like, a lot better than fucking Justice League. I can say that for a fact. Oh, yeah. But it was... It, the, the special effects were just... Just a, really good. R- really did take me by surprise how good they were. And I'm just yeah, interested I... to see how they're going to combine all these elements that they're going to be trying to do with this movie. You know, him fighting against the Grandmaster and, you know, obviously Black Manta coming in as well. Like, how they're going to balance all that out. I, I'm quite interested for it. I hope it... I hope it works. I hope it is like the best DCU film, just because so people can't brag that Wonder Woman is, but mainly because I just want to see James Wan, you know, with this big opportunity that he's got, you know, deliver like he did with Furious 7, because the amount of pressure he had on that film, and then ultimately I think it lived up to it, so if he can do the same for this, then that's fine. Yeah, you mentioned Black Manta. I love Black Manta in this trailer. He He looks so good. The costume is yeah, the costume Beautiful. is so good, and just like seeing, I like the actor who plays him as well. Um, I think it's, it's Yaya Abdul the second, something along those lines. Uh, he's got a really long name, um, but like I love how the trailer opens with on the sub because that's Black Manta's sub. So, and then later on you see him in like that small town on the surface, and he's being chased, and you just see like the laser beams and stuff. It looks mm. great. I feel like that's going to be my favorite part of the film is the stuff that actually takes place on land. <laughs> oh my. Just because it's Black Manta, just because I, I like him. But then, like even like even the stuff that does take place underwater, like that ending shot uh, with just like the crocodile, it looks great. Um, I'm really excited about this. I think this trailer actually, this trailer actually was better than I thought I was going. It was going to be. Yeah. I guess me I too. Is, a lot. I guess me too as well. But because I've seen all of James Wan's films, I kind of, you know, and I've, I think he's a very, very talented filmmaker. He's only made one film that I can conceivably say is bad. I did expect some, obviously, this trailer to be good. But even with all that, I think it was far better than I thought it could be. I mean, I, I definitely just off the cuff, I'd say definitely like watch some of Wan's films because then it'll, it'll give you more of a sense of for his style that he's probably going to have in Justice League because all of his film not Justice League sorry fucking hell Aquaman because all of his films have like this similar style and the way that he directs them so, and I think it'll, it'll probably get you more used to the way he'll like direct Aquaman just because I feel like it's going to feel like a very different film to what we've had before in the DC or at least I hope it is yeah so um We'll move over to DC TV. You know what we actually do here. Um, <laughs> what, what we're actually what was advertised. Um, so, can we each get the, of the sh- shows got a trailer? Are we getting the and- shit one out of the way with? Are we getting the shit uh, one out of the way with? Dropping <laughs> block. Um, also, I will mention Black Lightning quick, but Black Lightning didn't really get anything as far as I remember. No, it didn't. It was just Training like a recap of season one, wasn't it? Just a recap. And also, I. I assume there was a Black Lightning panel, but I don't really remember it being publicised. No, I don't no. remember seeing any news. So neither did I. The only news I know is that Khalil Payne, who is Painkiller, uh, he's a series regular next season. That's the only thing I saw. But I'm pretty sure that was announced like the day before Comic Con. So. Yeah. 
Anyway, we, we will get to the shit one. <laughs> um, so, Supergirl Season 4. Um, they had a panel, and they also had the trailer. Um, we'll just get the trailer out of the way, because the trailer was awful. It was uh, literally just... The worst CWDC oh, TV trailer ever at Comic-Con. I'm going to say that right now. It was literally... Well, to be honest, I will say this is better than the Black Lightning one this year. <laughs> Just because this no, 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 but, no, 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 because Black Lightning is automatically a better show. Supergirl is worse, and the fact that they only showed like five percent new footage makes it automatically worse. I mean, yeah, there was literally there's like three new things in the trailer. There's like a shot of Alex and Brainy, which is new. There was a shot of like this new suit, which people are like, oh, it's Kara's new suit. It's not. Um, and then there's also the introduction of. Agent, Agent Liberty, Liberty played yeah. by Sam Witwer, who like basically narrates the entire trailer. Other than that, there's nothing new. Now, that suit, for people who are saying it's Kara's new suit, it's not. It's clearly the suit for Red Kara, because otherwise, why would it have a mask on it? Mm-hmm. Now, one thing that's interesting is you've probably seen this today. Set photos have come out. Yep. <laughs> what is going on there? Like, what's happening there? <laughs> because they're using the suit. I mean, this isn't anything to do with Comic Con, but they're, but they're using the suit, and like we're all kind of speculating that they're using it as a body double for Melissa Benoist. Yeah, because she's doing Broadway. <laughs> I'm really confused as to what's going on here. So I mean, I. if this is Kara's new suit, then fair enough. But then, what's the why have the mask then? I don't understand what the mask's about. Yeah, it's so, just, it's just crazy. I'm really confused. But anyway, Jeez. the trailer was awful. The trailer's uh, awful. Move on. <laughs> so the panel. <laughs> The panel did have some a few things going on. Um, so, yeah, they did officially confirm that Red Sun is the storyline they're doing, uh, but no, it will so... come into play later in the season. It will be in the back half. Oh, my. That means they're going to focus on, oh, I can't get over mon just just for Ben. They're going to do it just for Ben. They're going to make the whole season drag about Kara wanting mon That's what it's going to be. It's, it's a weird kind of... Yeah, it's like uh, that. What worries me is the fact that they're just going to prioritize drama for the first half of the season, and it'll be like the second half of the season where they actually bother with the Red Sun. It's like that just bothers me. Yeah, because I can't quite work out what the storyline is going to be in the first half. Because I mean, there is some stuff that I'll bring up in a minute that has kind of hinted at what we could sort of stuff we could be seeing, but there's no major storyline going on. So it's just kind of like, is it just going to be basically filler <laughs> up, up until like the mid-season finale where we may get. I don't know. We may oh, get like, the first reveal of Red if Kara. It, if it is, I'm just going to check out. I really can't be bothered. <laughs> um, so Manchester Black has been officially confirmed for the show. He was... Um, but the casting is David Ajala, who is a British actor. He was in Fast and Furious 6. Um, I mean, he was literally in this movie for about five minutes, but he's in it. Um, <laughs> but he's playing Manchester Black. Sure, good choice. I mean, I'm pretty excited about this character, to be honest just because he seems like a pretty interesting one for Supergirl. Because um, he seems, in terms of like his combat style, he seems a lot more suited to like something like Arrow. But And that's obviously one of my biggest complaints about Supergirl is the action, so hopefully this <laughs> brings something unique to it. Go. Um, I'm, I'm trying to rattle through this really quickly because I don't care. Neither um, do I. Neither do I. <laughs> but this one's quite good, though. Um, we'll go back... Kara's going to go back to her journalistic route, so she's going to go back to Catco. Um... Which I'm quite happy about because, I mean, that was like some of the best stuff in season one. I think is <laughs> one terrible season. One. It's a, it's it's absolutely awful season one. But you know, I do like that side of it. I was like, I do like yeah. you know, the journalism. And side then in season three, they're just like, I can't do journalism, so it's just immediately like throws it away. And then yeah, Kara has almost nothing to do in terms of a character outside of being Supergirl. Yeah, I'm trying to be optimistic. I really am. Um, it's a season three really bogged me down on this show, uh, and the trailer really didn't help with the situation. Um, but he- Catco is going to be a heavy presence. So that's good. Um, I'm happy about that. And then sort of to go along with that, um, this one really got the headlines stirring. Nicole Maines has been cast as Naya Null. Oh, He's yeah. going to be the first transgender superhero. Um, obviously, this is the type of thing that Supergirl likes to do. They like to, yeah, you know, highlight all these sort of major issues in the world and that's they feel like they can do that they feel justified for some reason and um i mean the actress who they've got to play her is very much a uh, trans advocate and that's all good um she seems like i watched the panel she was pretty passionate she seems quite cool um so i do like her and also what's quite interesting is i i've i've sort of made a video on this i'll release it within the next couple of days um 
this character is actually now let me get this right she is the great 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 grandmother of hang on i've got my page <laughs> my video notes hang on I, I will get this right oh my god hang on, got it. so she is the great 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 grandmother of nora null or nora Nell, who is otherwise known as dream girl a member of the legion of superheroes okay mm -hmm. so this character of naya Nell, who nicole mains is playing she's not a character from the comics but in the show she is the great 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 grandmother of nora Nell, who is a character from the comics so dream girl is a character from the comics so basically what they're doing is this character is going to be a superhero called dreamer and she has kind of connections to the legion because she's the great 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 grandmother of an actual member of the legion are you following me i wouldn't be surprised if you got lost there um oh, i'm very lost <laughs> Basically, her great 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 granddaughter is a member of the Legion. God's sake! And also, this character is she's a um, intern at Catco, and she was like an intern for Cat Grant, but now she's been sent to National City, and Car is like her mentor. And then I assume she's going to discover that she has superpowers, and then she's going to train with Kara, and she's going to be the new sort of Monel's replacement. <laughs> oh my god. That's the way I'm reading this. Yeah, that's what I can tell. First transgender superhero. Yeah. So, there you go. Um, also, April Parker Jones has been cast as Colonel Haley in a series regular position. So, they're bringing in, like, a military character. Okay. Um, and that's it, really, for Supergirl. Uh, the panel was quite good, actually. Um, I will say that. The panel was quite good. It's just a shame the trailer was awful. Yeah. Especially because the panel did have Jesse Raff on it, and obviously Jesse Raff's a series regular, so... It's good to see him, and he was pretty funny as always. So I like seeing that. Anyway, move on. <laughs> Season four, you better impress me. You better win me back. Right. So we'll start off with the season seven. Well, this, this is Arrow season seven. I feel so unprepared this week. <laughs> I think we all do, to be perfectly honest. We're all drained after Comic Con. Absolutely. I still haven't recovered. Um. So anyway, Arrow season seven. We'll start off with the panel. Um. So they did officially confirm, you know, best Schwartz. She did confirm the uh, Longbow Hunters are the villains. And we also got the confirmation as to who the Longbow Hunters are. So it's going to be Red Dart, Kodiak, and the Silencer. So Red Dart is actually a member of the Longbow Hunters in the comics. So that's the only one who actually is. Mm. And then we've got Kodiak and the Silencer. And we also got the castings. So Holly Ellisa is going to be playing Red Dart. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Johnson is playing Kodiak and Miranda Edwards is playing the Silencer. Can I just say, the actress who's playing the Silencer, Miranda Edwards, she looks so much like her. It's like dead on. And also, one thing that's funny is all three of those actresses, uh, well, two actresses and actor, are all from Supernatural. All three uh, of them. No originality. That, well, that's a CW thing. I mean, we talk about this all the time. CW likes to keep their actings in house. So that's all there. But yeah, I mean, Longbow Hunters, that's all good. I mean, we all kind of knew this was coming eventually, so now we know who they are. I'm excited to see Red Dart. Like, I'm really excited to see Red Dart. And also, this actually confirms some of the um, the casting descriptions we got. So, like, the Silencer, I'm going to assume, is the one that was assumed to be Batwoman. Mm. Because she's described as a master of stealth, so there's that one. And Kodiak is going to be the one that we all described as blockbuster because he's the what because he's like described as like this big muscle basically. Yeah. So yeah, and then Red Dart is. I mean, we know who Red Dart is. Um. So yeah, that's the Longbow Hunters and their castings, and then they didn't really announce much else on the panel really. Uh, I mean, Stephen Amell said something quite interesting. He said that William has apparently got the most interesting arc, which bullshit. I'm sorry. Yeah, Stephen, exactly, yeah, that's, yeah. That's exactly what I was about to say. Um. But Stephen Amell was also saying that um, Oliver does something um absolutely horrible in the premiere so i want to know what that is and he was basically saying if you're a fan of oliver and if you root for the character he really hopes the premiere pisses you off that's what he says he probably beats up normal people that's what he probably he does prison, no no as in like in prison he just beats random people but then in the trailer we'll get to the trailer um but yeah that's what sort of Stephen Amell was saying apparently Oliver is like nothing heroic at all like he's so far from heroic see I, don't, see I don't know whether to believe Stephen Amell with that or not just because the trailer doesn't seem like that but maybe they've just shot it that way I'm probably just looking into it too much 
I will say though, I think the trailer for season seven is really dark. Like yeah. it seems like they've really they're really going back to like like really it even seems like darker than like season one. Mm, like, no. Like, no. No, no, but it does. Like it seems like in terms of like even like the colour palette and everything, it seems like it's a lot darker than it was. Um maybe it's just me, I don't know. Um and also this wasn't on the panel, but I just saw David Ramsey talking about it. Apparently, uh, Diggle's going to go a bit more into August, so like you're going to see more Lila next season, which I think we all love. Yes. Um, love a bit of Lila. And uh, we're going to find out who August answers to. Hmm. So that's quite cool. That's I like August. Yeah. I, I could definitely do with some more of that. Because they were quite a heavy presence in the earlier season, but then they just kind of went away. And also, more Lila is always a good thing. I would actually love to see Lila be a series regular. Yeah, even though so it, yeah, it's it's just it never happened though because the actress is too busy on other stuff. That's the only thing. It's just... I just really like her. I think she's cool. Um, also, Juliana Harkavy was saying that Dinah had and Black Siren's relationship is going to be very different because of Quentin's death. Rip. Um, so apparently she's going to feel a bit more sympathy, which is kind of ironic because of what Black Siren did to Vince. But... Yeah. Justice offense. Yeah. It's, oh god. It, it feels a bit ironic, but I mean, okay, whatever. I guess they have to kind of write themselves out of that hole, I suppose. Also, Stephen Amell did confirm Paul Blackthorn's definitely not coming back. <laughs> he just oh. had to nail that, and he just had to nail that in my skin, didn't so he? So you could cry your eyes out. <laughs> he was because even like people from the audience were coming up and saying like, "Oh, who's like?" It's like, "Oh yeah." So we're talking about all these characters, and you know, people can come back from the dead. And he was like, "Except Paul." <laughs> Paul's dead. And I was like, I was just like trying not to cry. Um, and then I'm trying to. There was something else that was said because I'm trying to think to the panel because these notes I'm reading off are the ones I made for my videos last week of the, before the panels were released. I only saw the panels today because they only got released today, and they weren't even official releases. They were just some guy in the audience filming them, but they were pretty good quality. Um, like Colton Haynes, who plays Roy, he was kind of talking about how this version of Roy is very different. Because he's Which, Green wanna, Arrow. He's Green yeah, Arrow. He's Green Arrow. I mean, I want to know how different he is because we only saw him like a few weeks ago, but, uh, or a few months ago by this time. But yeah, either way, I'm really happy. And it seems like Colton Haynes is really excited to be back. He yeah. seems like he's really happy to be back, and he's saying that Beth Schwartz is doing a really good job with with Roy as a character. So oh, all this praise cool. are giving Beth Schwartz because she's the best. She's Beth Schwartz. No, she didn't. She's Get with it. She's sure. It's Bash Schwartz. I, I'm I'm getting on the Bash Schwartz hype train. I actually am. I no, actually think she. Don't do it. Don't do it. Nah, she is. She's awesome. Oh my god. Better than Googie. Also, Hoss was talking about. Um, <laughs> Hoss was talking about how basically Renee is kind of stuck in a weird situation because he wants to, he wants to help being a vigilante, but then he's kind of stuck in this situation with Zoe. So. Uh, who is his daughter? So that's quite cool. Actually, I'm actually really interested in Renee next season. He actually seems to be quite interesting. Yeah. To be fair. Maybe they're actually not writing like an asshole. Maybe if we're lucky. <laughs> but then we've got we've got Bess Schwartz. <laughs> who but then she up, won't be writing. Who, so. who came up with the story of why the reason why we hate Renee? Fucking episode nine. <laughs> Boy. Um, so that's pretty much everything for the panel. Really, there wasn't really much. Also, <laughs> Echo Kellum who plays Curtis. He was there. Uh, you know, everyone was the characters up to and he was like Curtis is just chilling like that's literally what he said and to be honest it, I mean he says it as a joke but I wouldn't be surprised if, if he actually is because he's not in the trailer <laughs> like Curtis is not in the trailer I know I know they just compl- they just did him dirty there Cur- Curtis is clearly retired yeah. um anyway well I guess we can start talking about the trailer now um because in the trailer we do see Black Siren who I think might be the mayor now because based on where she stood that's where the mayor stands. Yeah. I think Black Siren's the mayor. But she was saying that um, that there's basically a no tolerance rule in Star City for vigilantes. So I think Curtis has shit himself and gone, yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Pussy. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you'd be happy if Black Siren was the mayor. Oh, yeah. I'd love it. I'd love it. Just to trigger all them Elicity fans, it'd be the greatest thing ever. You know? Like, but... it's, just, it's just the way she stood and, and where she stood, and she's addressing it. Because she stood where Oliver would stand when he did the press conference. So, I don't know. I just feel like she is. And also, would she be next in line? But then, would she? Because I give you... Because she's taken up she's taken up the Laurel Lance mantle. 
clearly. Yeah. But then what was Laurel anyway? Because mm. it's not like she was connected to the mayor's office at all. I mean, she was a lawyer, but... Maybe, you they, know. maybe they just thought, oh, mayor's dead. Let's just put his daughter in charge. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I can't hope that's the case. Yeah. I'd actually love it if she's the mayor. I think that'd be... Yeah, a- I'd, I'd, lo- I'd love it. But just to all those Olisty fans out there who'll say, oh, Black Siren can't be the mayor because she's killed people, just remember... Oliver has killed numerous amounts of people and he still managed to be mayor and none of us complained about it, so... Silence. And also, Quentin Lance has the potential to kill his own daughter, as we saw on Crisis on Earth X, you know? Just yeah. give it a slight... Yeah, yeah, just, it's like twisting the timeline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just, so just calm your nerves. Yeah. Anything could happen. Exactly. Oh, but Nancy that... Quentin is the best Quentin. <laughs> um, so, also, in the, I mean, what else do you want to talk about from the trailer? Like I said, I think Renee has, seems to be quite interesting because... We don't see him suited up as Wild Dog, but then we see him in that scene where he's like approaching a guy, like a group of guys who have like loads of weapons and stuff. Mm. I can't yeah. work out. Yeah, I, re- I reckon. There. I reckon what it is is because of this new law. I reckon he's tried to get back into being a vigilante, but he's tried to do it on a short scale, as in like he's had to slowly work his way back from it because of the the new law that's passed through for it. But I now think because I reckon crime's gotten so bad. He's try. He's now wants to go back into it, but I think he'll be like, like you said, stuck in two minds about it. Yeah. But what I'm thinking is, in that scene where you know where he's pulling out his gun, I think maybe uh, the person who's dressed up as the Green Arrow will come in and intervene, and then I think that's what will inspire Renee to like want to, you know, go ahead and become a vigilante again. Yeah, I. I... I actually saw a theory that Renee is the Green Arrow. No. I mentioned this in my video. No, because there's no, there's no way. Cause he doesn't have no, to fire it's... a bow and arrow. Yeah, he can't fire a bow and arrow. I thought it was quite a cool theory. Just like, but, well, yeah. it, yeah. it won't happen. But yeah, I mean, that whole scene where the Green Arrow comes in, that is clearly that scene. Uh, and obviously this is where Renee, because obviously as well, he's talking to Dinah and he says, you know, sometimes people just need something to believe in. And also Dinah is in that scene because she's now heading off the police department. So... Mm. Um, so Dinah's clearly not the Black Canary anymore, um, at least for now. She's kind of seeing as she's because she's the head of the SCPD, isn't she? So, yeah. or at least she's very high up anyway. So she's going to be sort of, you know, doing justice in that sense anyway, um, on the actual right side of the law. Um, and then yeah, Curtis isn't even in the trailer, so nothing to say about him at all. Um, he is clearly just chilling somewhere, um, which I quite. <laughs> I mean, that kind of suits his character. Um, I guess we could talk about Oliver. Oliver, he's not having a good time. <laughs> he's having a pretty shit time in prison. Pretty shit. Yeah, he's not doing great. He's uh, kind of being beaten up, and no one's really saying anything. No. He's just kind of taking it. Yeah, he's just um, taking it like a man. Yeah, we got a scene that was so beautiful that I've. It's just what I wanted. Oliver and shower room fight scene. Um, Oliver just fully nude. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Taking on you just another want, naked boy. You're just desperate to see Stephen Amell's ass. That's all you want to see. Basically, what I want is I want the scene from the room where <laughs> Tommy gets up. But Stephen, um, no. But I mean, this is what I wanted to see. Like, this is what I want. Not not his ass. I please, to see... please, please make it a brutal fight scene. Like, yeah, because like. I... I want to see brutal prison fight scenes like the Punisher in Daredevil. That's what I want to see. And obviously, it's not going to be as brutal as that. But I really want to see just Stephen Amell, just like Oliver Queen, just beating up people. And there's even like at the end of the trailer, he's in the prison yard beating up people. That's what I want to see. So, and it looks like we're getting that. So, all good. I'll, I'll take that. Everything is fine. <sighs> yes, I will take that. Uh, also, we get to see some people who's going to be facing. Yeah. So, Bronze yeah. Tiger is in there. Yeah, and, Bid- and Brick is in there. Vinny Jones is back. The Juggernaut <laughs> is back. Uh, and then, so, and then Cody Rhodes as well, Cody Mr. Rhodes. Cody Rhodes, is Stardust. Cody Rhodes plus, back. plus, he's back as a recurring character, so it'll be in more than one episode. <laughs> yeah, he's a recurring character. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because uh, I think Bronze Tiger and Drake they're only appearing in one episode because they're both like both the actors are like special guest stars. But from what I remember, Stardust is a recurring character. Oh, maybe maybe Oliver gets him out. Maybe Oliver. Maybe they do a WWE team tag wrestling on all the prison inmates. That'd be amazing. Oh. Well, if if he's a recurring character, then I have to imagine Oliver breaks him out. Yeah. Like maybe maybe he helps Oliver, because Stardust was in season five. He was under like the influence of something, wasn't he? 
He was like drugged up on something. Not really. No, 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 no. He was like, didn't he just get what was it? Star Stardust, whatever it is. He fell into a load of Stardust and it made him like impenetrable to injuries, didn't it? Or it like made him numb to pain. I don't really remember. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, either way, I'm happy Stardust getting more of a role. I just, I think he's actually a pretty good villain. Just because yeah. of the fact he's actually playing his WWE alter ego, I think it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's quite cool. Um, hang on, what else did we get in the trailer? Let me flip the page. Uh, we also got to see... Um, yeah, so basically Black Siren's talking about no vigilanteism. Uh, oh yeah, also Murmur, he's in there. <laughs> we see him in a show. No, no one cares about Murmur, he's crap. Though. No, no one really does, to be honest. Uh, and also, yeah, he's been in there for five months. The leak was a lie. Uh, he's trying to keep his head down and avoid conflict, which at first you're kind of like, oh, okay, but then I think that's clearly obviously a lie. Yeah. Uh, he definitely so, lied. Yeah. He's definitely lying. <laughs> and then it's quite funny because we see Diner saying that there's no vigilantes in the city. There's been no vigilantes for five months. So basically, Oliver said to his team, yeah, keep fighting. None of them listened. And <laughs> they've all just gone back to their lives. Um, even, even Diggle has just gone back to Argus and, you know. Um, but this is where we get to see the big thing from the trailer, the Green Arrow. Oh. The Green Arrow is still in Star City, but how can this be? It's Roy Harper. Facts. It's Roy Harper. Um, I mean, I'm so happy about this just because it's Roy, and I need more Roy. And if Roy is the Green Arrow, I'll take that. Oh my god. And I'm going to stop ending my sentences. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think the I just uh, think... It'd be pretty cool. It'd be really nice. For them to do that, obviously, because it like links back to season three when he poses. Why the green is he arrow. back? What is he? I mean, they did say we'll find out in episode one, which is good to know. Back. That's good to know. At least yeah. that means that maybe he'll have a substantial role in the first episode, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, I I think he'll probably get revealed at the end mm. to be the Green Arrow, but then to pet, maybe not necessarily to the characters, but it'll get revealed, and we'll see who who it is. So it, I guess if Colton Haynes was saying about him being. You know, very different. It means he is the Green Arrow. Um, although, how long will he be the Green Arrow? Who knows? He'll be back in the day. Um, facts. Wouldn't it be pretty cool if he was the Green Arrow for the crossover? I'd be interested by it. Be interesting to see the, the relate how our relationship works. Cool. Yeah, that'd be. I, I wouldn't mind that. Just, I know that a lot of people would probably not want that. You mean those are Listy fans, so they can't have a Listy kissing scene? Probably just sort of take Oliver. Now nah, I t- I'd, I'd take Roy. I take Roy over Diggle as the Green Arrow. Yeah, I I don't know. I just think it'd be cool if they really want to make this Oliver in prison thing matter. I think it'd be cool if you actually just left him in prison during the crossover. But then I don't think that's gonna happen. No. The way Stephen Amell talks about it. Yeah, you can't like, you can't leave Stephen Amell out of it, especially when it's Batwoman. And it's in Gotham. I don't think you can do that to Stephen Amell. Especially when they're leaving the legends out, and we'll get to yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's actually conf- that is actually confirmed now. By the way. Um, I, they confirmed it on a thing, but I'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, but, go on. But, but I was about to say, just in general, because we haven't really said it, said it. This trailer was probably the best of all the four. Oh, of them. easily, this is easily the best trailer because this trailer is one hundred percent new footage. One hundred percent. One hundred percent new footage. There is not a single ounce of season six footage in this. It's all completely from season seven, episode one, and that's extremely impressive. Also, it looks like Ricardo Diaz is about to kill William, which is amazing, but then it's probably, it's probably a dream true. sequence. And that makes me really sad. <laughs> but then, I don't understand, though. Why is he having dreams about Ricardo Diaz? Because Ricardo Diaz is the best. Yeah, but... I mean, I have dreams about Ricardo Diaz. <laughs> but I've met him. I don't think William has met him, has he? Uh, oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he he did. did, episode 13. Oh, my God. I mean, I, but I don't think it really makes sense if he's having nightmares about Ricardo Diaz. I don't know. I mean, Prometheus made sense, but... Maybe maybe, maybe Felicity it's a dream sequence of. Maybe Felicity's imagining him hurting William. Can we just get him to kill William, please? Yeah, like, can, you, can, can, you, we... can you just kill William and Felicity, please? Like, before Stephen Amell said about that... <coughs> Hang on. Hang on, is there another sneeze coming? Oh, no, no, there isn't good. Yeah. <laughs> Before Stephen Amell said that about that William story arc, you thought he was being killed. Like off. that was, I actually thought he was going to kill William because when I was watching, why the trailer, would they kill kids like, on the show? William. Why would they kill kids though? Because we need to be dark and edgy like Titans. Um, no, Arrow needs to compete with Titans. Um, no, but I just think 
I mean, what? I mean, you want William to die? Come on. I don't hate him as much as you do. You just have. This you, was the perfect opportunity. You, you just hate. Like, oh yeah. You just hate the actor. If they recast the character, you wouldn't care about it. Well, if he was a good actor, then yeah, maybe I would have. I would feel differently. I mean, I still don't want. I still don't son. Uh, unless it was unless it was actually Connor Hawk, but well, it's not Connor Hawk. So what? what's the point? <sighs> it's just it's stupid. Anyway. I'd say that pretty much wraps up the Arrow trailer. It is easily the best one. Brilliant trailer. Um, it's probably the best Arrow trailer they've done for years. Yeah. It, best best one. Best one since season two. I'd say so. It's it's just brilliant, and it's got me so hyped for season seven. So mm. more than I already was. Defo. Right. Legends of Tomorrow. So I'll, I'll just talk about what I was just. Um, talking about there so yeah legends of tomorrow is not part of the crossover also one thing i should mention about the crossover as well the crossover is episode nine this year officially um oh so that's the cool. mid-season finale for all the shows is episode nine. Oh, oh no is episode eight sorry oh so, episode... so we're not getting it until yeah. 2019 oh for fuck's sake no 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 it'll be this year how then? Because if the crossover episodes are episode nine and episode eight is the mid-season finale, then we would have to wait until next year. No, 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 year. no, 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 no. What I mean is, like, episode eight will be the mid-season finale, and then you will get you will get the crossover immediately after. Oh, but, and then they go on like, break. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I get it now. I get it. Because obviously the big confusion was about the Flash and its a hundredth episode. So basically, what's happening is episode eight. Oh, of the Flash season five is the mid-season finale. It's also the 100th episode. Um, Tom Cavanaugh is directing that episode. Oh damn! As well, it's gonna be good. But then episode nine for all the shows is gonna be the crossover, and then that's the, you know, that's when they go on break. So ah, I see. But Legends of Tomorrow is not part of it. Bullshit. And now, and this, this was officially confirmed. It's not only is the episode itself not a part of it, but the characters are not gonna be a part of it either. Um, I'm annoyed at this. This is because this does annoy me a little bit because it feels like wasted potential, and I don't really see the point in it. But basically, what Katie Lotts was saying, she was saying that basically it just didn't line up and it didn't it didn't work for what they were trying to do. Um, and you know these crossovers they take a lot of work, they take a lot of effort, and they just couldn't really fit the legends in this year. They were saying that what the legends were doing it just doesn't fit with what they were trying to do, and it it just didn't work out. So basically, the legends are going to be missing out this year. Um, which I guess is fair enough, but I mean, it just would have been cool to have them. <laughs> um, I just like seeing the legends interact with everyone else. Um, but I guess they really want to focus on Arrow this year in the crossover on top of the Batwoman stuff. So, mm. yeah. Anyway, that's like the major piece of legend news. It's a bit sad, but I guess very we sad. Accept it. So, we finally got the confirmation as to who Maisie Richardson Seller is playing. Um, she is playing a character called Charlie. So, completely new character. She's not related to Amaya at all. Uh, so, why she looks identical to Amaya, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but basically, she is one of those fugitives who are going to be like one of the villains, or like the villains of the season. Kind of like the anachronisms and the aberrations and stuff. She's going to be one of them. And basically, she fell through the portal... Uh, which was the portal that the legends opened in order to get Malice out. She came through that. So she's a fugitive. She's like kind of being described as like a rebel without a cause. She's um, like a prankster and like a trickster. So that's quite interesting for Maisie Richardson Zellas to play. Um, also, she's British. So she actually sees her actual accent for oh, once. Damn. That'll, so that's quite that, good. that'll throw a lot of people off. I know. It used to throw me off in like the promos when like she would show up at the end. Um, so yeah, she's she's basically neither good nor evil. She just kind of does what suits her best. So she's basically the Legends version of Malcolm Merlin. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm down with this. It's basically trying to figure out will the Legends trust her, and also it's probably going to cause a rift between the Legends and Constantine because this is the type of thing that Constantine wants to avoid. Uh, but the Legends are probably going to want to keep this person on because it's basically a Maya, and also how Nate's going to react to it as well. But, I mean, what do you think about this? Because I we we were kind of speculating about this for a while. Yeah, I I, I think it's interesting, but I just 
I understand, obviously, they wanted to keep Maisie, Maisie Richardson Sellers because, obviously, they really like having her on set, but it's like, she's playing a completely different character, so why does she look exactly like a Maya? If they don't explain that on the show, I'll just find it a little bit strange. And plus, because I associate her so much with a Maya, it'll be hard to see her as anyone other than that character. Like, it'll just seem a bit weird to me. I guess it'll depend on how they write her and whether I can distinguish her or not but i don't know i just i'm a bit 50 50 on the whole thing to be perfectly honest yeah i'm a bit confused about whether they will explain it i mean they have to surely why she looks like amaya because otherwise it's just not going to make sense at all um but also i'm just confused well i'm not confused by this but it's just the fact that major richardson seller is actually going to get to play a different character i think that's quite i think that's quite a good opportunity for her because that's not an opportunity that you would normally get on a TV show. You know, the fact that you can be an actor who was playing a character and you just get to play a completely different character. Yeah. Uh, I think that is quite a cool opportunity. And the fact that she's kind of like a prankster and a bit more fun. Because, you know, Amaya was always... She was always the straight, you know, the straight one out of the out of uh, the, the, the Legends. Because they're always quite silly, but she was always like, the serious one. Mm. So the fact that she's going to get to play a bit of a silly character is quite fun. So I'm, just, I'm kind of interested to see her dynamic with the Legends and also with Nate. But yeah, it's it's just a whole Amaya doppelganger thing. I I don't understand, so they need to explain that big time. Yeah, I hope they do. I hope they just don't leave it unanswered because it just it just be frustrating. Uh, also, an actress known as Ramona Young has regular be a superhero of some kind. Pretty vague, but that's all we got. <laughs> um, now this one I absolutely love. Now. I will give the Legends writers credit here because they have proved me wrong. I said they were going to do nothing with Nate next season. Absolutely nothing. But not only are we going to be exp- are we going to be exploring Nate's backstory next season, but also he's going to be introdu- inter- interacting with his father. Now, we knew his father was coming to the show uh, due to a casting description for Hank Haywood. But now we know who's playing him. And this is honestly a dream come true. <laughs> now, have you seen who, who this is? No. So it's Tom Wilson. Now, you you might not know that name, but you'll definitely know who he played. He played Biff Tannen in Back to the Future. Oh, no. Oh, God. We've got Biff as Nate's dad. <laughs> Jesus. This is the best thing ever. I'm so happy about this. I mean, he doesn't look remotely like him, but I think it's so funny. Just the fact that, obviously, this is a time travel show, and we've got, like, the main villain from the most famous time travel film series of all time <laughs> playing Nate's dad I think it's so funny and just the fact that he's going to be on the show is, is brilliant um, I'm so down for this <laughs> I am to be honest God. God. now I'll tell you what you'll also be down for this is probably the best news to come out of Comic Con it's been officially confirmed that in Legends of Tomorrow season we'll see the return of Bebo, of Bebo. oh <laughs> I'll, just the bit he's where he's coming back, boys. He's coming back. Oh, I can't wait. I this mean, is all we cared about. I know. I, know. I mean, I mean, we wanted. Like, can we all just agree that the highlight of the Legends panel was when he showed up? I mean, I, I, obviously, <laughs> it was a, it was a bit underwhelming when it was revealed to be Gary, but no, it wasn't. I, I, that, I, that, but, that amplified it. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. But oh, I was amazing when he just showed up. Everyone in the crowd was like, "Gary, Gary." Oh, it was funny as well. Like, he tries to give Donut for a hug, and he just shoves him away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's... it's funny because he's like sat on the end of the panel, like just like staring at everyone, <laughs> and it's like, and it's just Gary trying to do the Bebo voice, and like Katie Lots. It's just I can't tell if they knew it was him in the suit because like Katie Lots was like, "Who is that voice?" Like I recognize that voice. He just took the thing on. It was Gary, and the crowd went mental. Oh! <laughs> like everyone was like, "Gary, Gary!" <laughs> oh! It's so funny. And I just, I mean, yeah, Bebo is the best thing ever. He's the best thing to ever happen to the Arrowverse. I'm sorry, he is. And um, the well, fact I, he's coming back. He yeah, is amazing. Well, he's actually in. I think it's Supergirl, the Flash. Because there's he was a, in the, the Flash. It was. Yeah. No. 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 He will be in in Supergirl because you know where they've been shooting. It's yeah. in a carnival. And on one of the stalls, apparently, you can make out Bebo toys that, that people can win on a stall. So Bebo will be making a cameo in Supergirl. Yeah! He's officially crossing over. He just, needs to appear, he just needs to be on Arrow. That's the only show he hasn't appeared on. Oliver uses him for target practice. Yeah. <laughs> or Oliver has a cuddly Bebo with him in prison. Yes! <sighs> At least now we know that Bebo exists in the... He exists on multiple Earths. 
Oh, oh I mean, Bebo just gets me so excited. And this is why I love Legends. Legends is just, oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's it really is. It's a, it's a work of art. Um, and then I'm trying to think back to the panel now, trying to think back of other stuff. Um, oh yeah, they did confirm that Rip Hunter won't be coming back at all next season, which uh, it's great. Why? I kind of thought he would. Yeah. But I mean, I will say at least they're making his death last a bit longer than I thought they would. Although to be <laughs> honest, I still wouldn't be surprised if he does show up at some point. Even if it's just like a tiny little cameo of some kind, I wouldn't be surprised if he does show up. Uh, they were also saying there's no plans at all Firestorm or Captain Cold. Hmm. Which Captain Cold made sense. Um, now they did say Firestorm they didn't necessarily say Jax because I, I, I think Jax might come back next season again even if it's just like one episode or a cameo or something I think Jax might come back um, because when I spoke to my good friend Franz Drummond oh, at, my. at Heroes and Villains this, Fanfest, this ex- exclusive scoop information exclusive people scoop right here this is just this is you know you heard it here first he said he might come back next season so he might have just been telling me that, but I don't know. He said he said my theory at the end of season three was absolutely banging. So yeah, but about the uh, fire totem and stuff. You so. probably he probably secretly thought it was shit and was like, oh, I'll just say it's, no, uh, it's cool. You're not best, best mates, though, are you? You're not best mates. I spoke to him for like five minutes. That was longer than you spoke to him. Yeah, because I didn't pay to see him. Well, you met him anyway, didn't you? Because of me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, All I got to do was shake his fucking hand and say, I. Oh, and you thanks. got to meet Brown and Ralph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, I did so, for free, so I can't complain. And also, you're getting into the whole show next year for free because I'm me. Hey, I'm such a good I, friend to this guy. I promise that the, I prom I promise that next year I will give you the Officer K Funko. You better. I will do. I promise. I've still got it here waiting for you. I'm gonna be texting you like every hour before you leave to make sure you pack because if you forget, I'm gonna be raging. Yeah, except um, yeah, but you might have to meet me outside to get it because it might look a bit dodgy if I'm bringing in an Officer K Funko. Just saying. Yeah. And then I hand it over to you and it'd be like, he's stealing. We digress. Um, so the Legend Season 4 trailer was kind of 50-50 Season 3 footage and Season 4 footage. I think that, um, you know, it, it kind of just, it didn't really show much, did it really? No, it just didn't really show anything. Like, it was just, I, I mean, it was probably the second worst one behind Supergirl. But I mean, it wasn't terrible. I mean, it was better than last year's, but it didn't really, yeah. it didn't make me go, oh, really pumped for it. I mean, obviously, I'm still excited for it because I love season two and season three. But just on the trailer by itself, it didn't get me hyped for season four any more than I already am, which is quite a fair bit. But I will say, from that aspect though, the trailer was a bit of a letdown. But then, yeah, I I found it a bit of a strange one. It was just kind of like. Because even though I found the trailer disappointing, one thing I will say is I think the Legend Season 3 trailer was pretty bad, and that ended up being the best season, so you know, you can't really judge these things, but I just feel like it didn't really show anything that excited me, really. Mm. Except for Constantine. Because <laughs> Constantine's <laughs> amazing. And Gary shows up at a point. Which is great. Um, I mean, we see a unicorn, so that kind of like hints at like the type of things we'll be seeing. Um, also, Mick is just amazing in the trailer. Um, I also got my prediction correct that they'd be going to the 60s for the first episode well done so yeah I'll take that one take all the credit there also I'm pretty sure Nate is high AF in the trailer so good we like more. we like high Nate we always yeah we like high Nate. Nate we like Nate on drugs it's always good um, so yeah I, I mean it just didn't really show much that's the thing it just didn't show much it, there's not really much to talk about in the trailer it's basically just them knocking around 60s America. I uh, see Jimi Hendrix. Says <laughs> that's something. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's just not much to talk about with this trailer, unfortunately. I want, I want to talk about more about Legends, but I just there's not a lot to talk about, so I guess we'll mm. move on. Yeah. Move on to the Flash, which I have to say, I'm actually very impressed with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I thought that was a good trailer. It was a good trailer, and it, they they released a lot of good information as well. Mm. I thought the Flash were kind of going to shit the bed, but they actually they actually didn't. I thought they did a pretty good job. But um, then again, we thought this about season three's trailer. I mean, season four, sorry. Yeah, but I mean, the season four trailer for the Flash wasn't amazing. It was all right, but this was much better. But anyway, 
go back to the panel. So like I said, Tom Cavanaugh will be directing the 100th episode. Uh, Danielle Panabaker will make her directorial debut episode. Well, I, bet, I, bet, I bet you were so happy when you found that out, weren't you? Well, you know, I mean, I'm glad and to see my you, girl you, get some Yeah, you know and I mean? now you hope there's going to be a lot of Snowberry moments, don't you? <laughs> oh um, my... What was that noise? I don't know. I don't That's know almost, I that is almost as cringy as your voice at the start of your searching review. Oh, that was brilliant. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Just my! Just because God. I've got the bants in some of my movie reviews. Oh, oh absolutely was... banter! I get some well good. I get some well good comments about. That. Yeah. Uh, not about that one. I'll give you. But... So, um, oh, Grod and King Shark are going to be teaming up next season if they can. But <laughs> that's basically what Todd Helbing was saying. He was like, like "We'll do it if we got the money. <laughs> if we got enough money for it." That's and basically what he the said. The thing is, if they did both of them in an episode. The show would probably go into bankruptcy. Yeah, like, I they, mean, they're not gonna have the budget, are they? Like, it's not gonna be able to do it. I think. No, I mean, I don't know. They could do. It depends, because it depends on what they're doing this season. But then again, it's like obviously someone like Ralph Dibney, he costs quite a lot of money, and he's a series regular. Mm. And then so, also they've got another speedster now. Yeah. So basically, it ain't happening. We can just accept that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, at least they didn't say it was happening and then, like, it just won't happen. Like, at least they said it, it might happen. They said it, it might not. Uh, so at least there's not, you know, there's that. Um, I think that... Oh, yeah, he also said we're going to be... I was trying to figure out what else he said. He was. He said that in that exact same sentence that we're going to be seeing younger versions of the rogues, which confuses me. Like, why are we seeing younger versions? Because I thought we weren't doing time travel. Because mm. if it's not time travel, then why are they younger? And also, this would be the perfect excuse to bring back Captain Cold, just saying. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, there's still you a lot. Can bring back Heat Wave. Mm, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Um, so, I think that younger version of the Rogues thing is really confusing. I just... I need some clarification on that, to be honest. Um, mm. Cisco Ramon, which Carlos Valdez is high as fuck. <laughs> to oh Comic -Con my this year. god. Or he's, or he's hungover, one of the two. Or maybe he just liked wearing sunglasses. I don't know. Um, I mean, he seemed alright. He seemed perfectly capable. <laughs> he just decided to put some shades on. Um, basically, he's still struggling after Gypsy's breakup. <sighs> Fucking writers. And Fucking writers. Basically, he is getting some help from Ralph to be getting his bachelor game back on point oh, um, nice. so this is all great obviously Yeah, that's definitely not going to trigger any of Ralph's haters also apparently Caitlin is help helping him in this which can I just say Caitlin is this real place to... like at the end of the day every single relationship you've had they've all died so, so is this... oh. well Ralph's Except already for... Ralph has technically already died though so it's alright no but th th that's actually funny though because Ralph uh What's his name? Hartley Sawyer and uh, Daniel Panabaker. They, they were actually saying that Ralph and yeah. uh, Caitlin will never date. They were saying that that's not that's never going to happen. <laughs> oh. so they've just shut everyone down. Uh, so, I mean, that's I guess that's a good thing. Um, yeah. Also, Iris is officially being a journalist again. Yay! Finally, Finally. About time. Get her off Team Flash. Candace Patton's really happy about it as well, which is good. Get her off Team Flash. She's awful. <laughs> Come on. Um, yes. And then. Uh, we're going to be getting the new, getting a newer suit a, again, <laughs> another new suit, which is going to be more comic book accurate. Another and suit. This, oh my. Yeah, God. it's another one, and it comes along with a flash ring, which obviously we are getting the flash ring this season, uh, which, which we'll talk about in the trailer. And we also got the official announcement that the series uh, of the season five, Big Bad, is Cicada, which is actually pronounced Cicada, which I didn't know. Yeah, I was about to say, why did you pronounce it Cicada when it's Cicada? Hey, don't act all smart. I only told you this. It's, just, it's, it, it, it's a clearly Cicada, though. Clearly is. I think, to be honest, I think the American pronunciation is Cicada and then the British pronunciation is Cicada because Cicada sounds better in a British accent than yeah. an American accent. And Cicada sounds better in an American accent than a British accent. You know, so... And again, I was saying this to you before we started recording. I think different characters on the show is going to pronounce it a different way. Yeah. Like the Ra's al Ghul, Ra's al Ghul thing on Arrow. I think it's gonna be the same thing. So 
you know, but I'm going to call him Cicada from this point on, even though I've always called him Cicada, I'm going to call him Cicada because that's what Todd Helbing said. Uh, and he's, you know, he's the big man. Um, <laughs> also, Chris Klein is going to be playing him, which was completely different to what the leaks said, because they lie. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sick of leaks. Um, but yeah, I mean, Chris Klein seems like a pretty capable actor. I haven't really seen him in anything. Have you seen him in anything? I have not even heard that name until you told me about it. What? Until just now? No, I didn't even know. I didn't even know about he was cast in the role. <laughs> God, where is your research? No, no, man? Were you, I'm, were you I'm not sorry. DC TV talks. No, not really. I didn't watch all your videos. I didn't have much time. I'm really sorry to disappoint you, but it's just it's true. Well, Basically, like... people were a bit upset by the casting of Chris Klein because basically everyone wanted Mark Pellegrino, but it's not him. So I don't know who this guy is. I don't really know what he's been in, uh, but he seems all right. <laughs> seems like a decent bloke so yeah i mean the whole teaser and i mean we'll jump straight into the trailer they finally showed us that teaser that was meant to be at the end of season four how do you know uh, it's it's a, how, do you, how do you know that it is though well what else is it maybe it's just footage that they sh- they shot for the final scene of season five episode one but they just put it in the trailer there's no grant gustin said it was in the panel how do- Oh, did he? I didn't. I see, see. I told you I haven't watched the panel, so how would I know this? <laughs> no, I, did tell, I sent you the links. I sent you the links earlier. So. Yeah, but that, own... that doesn't mean I've seen it. It's your own fault. I told you to prepare, and you didn't. So, yes, this was the scene that was cut from the finale, um, and we basically see a guy who's trying to do his best Darth, best Darth Vader impression walk into the room, and it's basically like an apartment that's got like loads of kids stuff around. So I assume his family's dead. And he basically slams a lightning bolt dagger on the table, which then gets struck by like energy by the TV and it lights up and you know, does some pretty lights. And yeah, that's Cicada. We also get a quick flash of like his mask as well. No pun intended. Mm. Um so yeah. Mm. Oh Cicada. just just remembering it now, I do actually know Chris Klein off of, of the stuff. He was in American Pie, wasn't he? I swear he was. Yes, he was. Play, played Oz, didn't he? American Pie. I, I get it. It's because of, it's because how you said the name. I was trying to think if it's Klein with a C or with a K. I was thinking of another guy whose name was like last name started with a C. But no, no, I know who he is now. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's definitely a lot younger than the other people they had like on the quote unquote leaks to play him. He's definitely a lot younger, especially. Yeah, the, I mean, they're clearly changing the character up quite a yeah. bit because. I mean, what... even what Todd Helbing was saying, like, because he was basically saying that this version of Cicada, Cicada is quite different <laughs> from the comics. I know, I'm, just, I'm gonna slip up on that all the time. Um, <laughs> I've literally just uploaded a video, so I'm just getting my notes up again. Um, so he said that um, his powers present a new challenge for Team Flash. So I don't know what that means because his power in the comics is that he, had, well, he's immortal and he can take other Meta's powers. So I guess immortality is a new thing, but then are they going to make him immortal? Yeah, I don't think so. I think it depends on how much they're going to take and remove from his like comic book counterpart. So I don't know. Maybe we'll just have to wait until we're closer to the start of the season. Because I mean, just with the way that they make it sound, it makes it seem as if they are probably going to make some big changes to the character. To be perfectly honest, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up being like completely different to how he is in the comics, and like the only similarity. You know, is is the actual name? You know, kind of similar to Prometheus and the in Arrow. Yeah, I mean, the cast seem very excited about it. They're saying that he's actually a very scary villain. He's saying they're actually trying to get like a really scary villain, like a Zoom vibe. Yeah, like Zoom. Yeah. So, I mean, that's good. I think that worked really well with Zoom. Yeah, so. definitely. Um, but yeah, the cast seem very excited. Like, even Grant Gustin was saying apparently he's wanted to get Cicada on the show like ever since it started. Apparently, so damn. He's- Grant Gustin's getting a lot of his wishes come true this year. Yeah, like he's clearly slipped in a favor somewhere because he's getting like because he's got the flash ring. I guess we talk about that as well. We've got the flash yeah. ring. Uh, looks great. Um, basically, Nora gives it to him. Now I'm confused because obviously in the trailer he's like, "Oh, I haven't got a suit," so Nora hands him that. So inside that ring is that the original flash suit? I think it's the suit that he wears. You know, in the what's it called? What was it? The you know in the end of season one where his like older self is fighting the reverse flash when he's a child. I think it might be that suit. Because it's what, like so you mean 
So is it like, yeah, so it'll be like a season one suit, but it'll have the white emblem on, but it'll be a lot brighter because I remember that being being like that, basically. It's confusing to explain, but basically I think it'll be like a season one suit, but brighter. And I think that's what they mean by more comic What's book accurate. What's going on with the season one suit, then? I don't know. I, I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe it's a flashback. I'm, really no, I, I'm just confused, okay? Don't expect me to know all the answers. This is the flash. I'm really confused about the whole season one suit thing, because in the season one suit in the trailer, we saw that for There's a shot of him in the trailer, and I just don't know what's going on. Um, also, Nora is officially XS, which was... Was that leaked beforehand? I think it might. I think it is maybe in one of the leaks before. Right? Okay, well done, leaks. You got one thing right. Um, although, I mean, everyone based kind on of the costume, yeah. it was kind of obvious. <laughs> and based on the set photos, it was kind of obvious. Um, but yeah, I think. Oh, no, it wasn't a leak. It wasn't a leak. People were just guessing it because of the set photos. Oh. Yes. Yeah, screw leaks, man. Fuck um, the leaks. Screw leaks. Um, Fuck the leaks. Yeah. No, I'm telling no, you. <laughs> I go back to my old position. Um. So yeah, she's XS. Apparently, that was a nickname that Barry gave her when she was a kid. Why he nicknamed her kid XS, I don't know. <laughs> what that means, I don't know. Um, I guess we'll have to find out. Does XS mean anything in the comics? Don't not. I don't know. I probably should know, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know too much on that front, so I'm just gonna move on. Um, but they were talking about how like because Nora's like really kind of like clingy to Barry but then very obviously avoiding a virus and this kind of worries Iris because she's like well why what's happened to me um so yeah that's basically it and um Nora's big mistake is that she is trapped in our time and she can't get back so that's her I mean we don't necessarily know what the mistake is yet um I personally think her mistake might be something to do with interacting with herself based on the set yeah, photos I think so yeah interacting um, with herself and it like yeah cause like a disruption in time yeah because i mean obviously if you if you watch legends you'll know that's like the biggest no-no in the mm. entire like rule book yeah is it, to not interact yeah because mo- yeah because most time travel shows like follow that as well like if you interact with yourself it basically like you, you mess up the timeline because then you end up causing like what what's it called like a casual loop or something it, yeah. it's hard to explain but yeah i, I get what you mean yeah, and there's a really good line actually in the trailer where Barry's like, you know, she could Marty McFly herself out of existence because she's coming back to the time of her parents in their prime, sort of thing, which is obviously what that obviously what Back to the Future One was was about. Um, so I, I don't know, maybe Nora has like messed up. You know, she met with a younger version or, or older version of herself, and then she came back to our time, and she's just like instantly screwing stuff up more and more. Um, typical plus, Alan. I mean, typical Alan. Yeah. Like father, like daughter. Um, Jessica Parker Kennedy, who plays her, she was saying that like basically she's very um, like acts on impulse and she's very um, like giddy and just she doesn't really think before she acts. So perhaps it's just like a chain of stuff that she was just trying to you know she's not trying to do this stuff. She's trying to actually like probably save herself, but she just keeps getting herself into more trouble. So she's just like I need to get to bury it at his prime. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that's what it is with Nora. Um, and then if I get my trailer, it's back. I'm literally flicking back and forth. Oh my god, this man is so unprepared. That it's because means... I got like it's because I keep flicking back to like individual notes for like video topics I've got planned. Um, so um, oh yeah, so Barry says that Nora shouldn't be here, so we got that line finally. And Nora is hiding something. It seems. I reckon it's probably a death. I think it might be that Iris might be dead. Yeah, that's what I think will happen. Or maybe Barry's dead. Oh, and and, and, yeah, but imagine if they pull the Iris is dead thing again. It's like, we've got to that's save Iris. Oh. Barry, and that, I yeah. think it might be Barry, and that's why she's so obsessed with the Flash. Yeah, that's. I she's think back. so. She's back in our time. She's like, oh my god, it's Flash. It's Barry. It's my dad. Um, and, oh yeah, Wally's in episode one as Kid Flash. So that's good. Uh, for his final crescendo. And he's on that massive plane that's going down, so he's probably going to get involved in that somehow, get scared, and then he's going to die. die, yeah. No, <laughs> don't do it. No, no he's not going to die. Um, I think if he was going to die, Keenan Lonsdale wouldn't have said anything. Mm. I think... Or, like, they would have announced that he's leaving, but he would have been like... You know, he would. it would have been like how Paul Blackthorne act- 
acted. Yeah. Where he just he just wouldn't have said anything. But he's like, you know, he's saying that Wally will return when you need him, sort of thing. So mm. he's not dead. I think he's just gonna get really scarred by this plane thing, this plane incident, and he's gonna go like, yeah, screw this. I'm not. And there's another speedster now, so he's just gonna take my place. So see you later. Um, and then there was also some other things announced on the panel actually, which I need to get up because I did get them before we started. Here we go. So there are going to be a lot of deaths this season, apparently. That's what Todd Helbing said. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, any early death predictions? Joe. <laughs> I've, been, <yeah. laughs> I, I've, I've been saying Joe's going to die for like three years. <laughs> and, when it, and when it does happen, you'll cry almost as much as you did with Quentin. I probably will. I, I, I um, bet, and I bet because they use the same sets, I guarantee you he dies in the same hospital room as Quentin. <laughs> in the same hospital bed. <laughs> Oh, God. His body gets buried next to Quentin. Oh, um, oh no! Go do this to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Joe's always been like the obvious one, but maybe that's why he never has died. Also, he's now a dad again, so <laughs> that's gonna be really sad. Um, maybe. <sighs> maybe I'm trying to think. Would they kill Cisco or Caitlin? Oh. <sighs> I don't know which one I'd take out of those two to be killed off, though. Because Caitlyn seems to have a story which could hint at the fact that she might die. I don't know. But I bet because... they kill... I, I don't know. I don't know, because... I don't, I, don't I don't know if they kill either of those two, because I think, like, the OG characters and the, these shows don't have the balls to do that. They won't kill off Ralph, because, obviously, he just got introduced last season. They just made him a series regular. Cecile, and they killed him last season. Yeah, and to Cecile, I don't... I, I don't know. I don't think they would. I think they were meant to kill Cecile last season. I, th- I think they might have backed out of it. Yeah. I don't know. I have, I have no idea at this point. Because there it. wasn't actually like a major death last season. I mean, there was Ralph, but obviously that was pointless. Yeah, because he got reverted. <laughs> I don't know. Also, I mean, Carlos Valdez did say that Cisco's powers are going to be tested more than they've ever been tested before. So, I I don't know. I have a fear. I mean, he says there's a lot of death. That's what he said. He says there's a lot of death. Hmm. Um, and obviously, Flash has got quite a big cast. I don't know. I I, I legitimately don't know. Yeah, I I, I mean, I'm I'm quite what, worried now. What what what, 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 what? Watch it just be a load of side characters like Captain Singh. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. That, I I reckon that I reckon we'll probably get like one major death, and then yeah, we'll get like loads of other, like weird side character deaths and stuff. Mm. Oh, maybe, maybe maybe they'll kill um, maybe they'll kill what's her name, Katie Sackoff. I mean, Thank the fucking lord. <laughs> maybe maybe they'll kill her. Um, they haven't actually said anything about that's her tragic, actually. tragic. Oh, oh my god. Uh, the show will introduce an LGBT character. Um, oh sure. yeah, yay, yay. Move on. <laughs> yeah, the season will kick off with a newer Wells. He is a very uh, intelligent human being who cannot be trusted. You're so, Thorn 2.0. Confirmed. Um, I like the fact they're actually going down like the untrustworthy well thing again. I actually like that. Um, yeah, it's the same thing as before. It's a bit fresh. Same thing as before. Uh, apparently, right? a very loud wells as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> apparently. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm actually really happy with getting a new wells. Yeah, just because it gives some Tom Cavanaugh something different to work with, and Tom Cavanaugh is just amazing. Anyway, after that minor little technical difference, <laughs> um, I was talking about the Wells, so yeah, we're getting a new Wells who cannot be trusted, yeah. apparently. Um, well, Tom, Cav- the- Tom Cavanaugh can play like two, 10 different versions of the character and they all feel different, so I really don't have much of a problem with it, to be honest, because Tom Cavanaugh is amazing. He's just a man. He- um, he's, he's so funny on the panel. Like, oh. just, do you know what? I actually love watching him and Grant Gustin interact, because they actually seem like genuinely best mates. Yeah. <laughs> they get on so well. Um, also, the Flash will come with a really new cool suit. So, yeah, I knew that. Uh, season five theme is legacy. That's what I said. Interesting. Um, That's the same thing as Arrow season five. Indeed. Also, I'm pretty sure they said earlier that the season five theme was family, but okay. <laughs> I, and I know, I know, Arrow said that as well, but it's a. Oh no, Arrow season six was about family, wasn't it? Yeah. No, no. I don't. Yeah, se- se- oh yeah, season six. Yeah, season six was family. Season five, legacy. I'm getting mixed up here. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's everything with the Flash. And that is the end of Comic Con. 
God damn, that was very quick. <laughs> it actually was, to be fair. I actually thought it was going to be a lot longer. And the thing is, with a lot of this news, it's hard to discuss a lot of it because we still don't know a lot. It's all just like vague stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, to be fair, for, for DC TV, I think this Comic Con was actually pretty good. Um, especially in comparison to last year's. I think last year's DC TV lineup wasn't very great. Um, oh, it was so just shit. in terms of the trailers and. I that, think the panels were probably a bit better last year, but the, the trailers were a lot better this year, especially because like the Arrow trailer was amazing. Yeah, definitely. And the Flash trailer is very good. Uh, Legends is okay. Supergirls is crap. Uh, <laughs> As always. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think overall for Comic Con this year it was pretty good for DC TV, and I I enjoyed it. I mean, I was really tired on Sunday after making eleven videos. Um, but when all is said and done, you know we're just ever closer to the seasons. So let's roll on it. <laughs> is that all? I think that's all. I believe that is. Good. <laughs> so, did you guys enjoy this episode? If you did, make sure you give this video a like and share it around with anybody else who loves the Arrowverse and get them to get in on this conversation of extreme enlightenment. And with ever all that said, I can't even speak now. <laughs> <clears throat> with all that said, I have been your host, Declan McKinney, otherwise known as DCTV Talk. I have been <laughs> Daniel McCant. Oh, full title this week. I know, I know. I'm being professional here. <laughs> Very official. <laughs> and with that professionality continuing on, we hope to see you again next week. See you.